Hi, my name is Amy Miller, and I'm the founder of Our Family Encounter. One of the things that I've realized in the last few months is a, uh, a friend of mine, actually a former neighbor, reached out to me this summer, and he actually sent me a text and said, Hi, I need help using my phone. And this is a neighbor of mine, probably I moved away nine years ago. I reached back to him and I learned, and I will go through some of these things uh, that I learned when I meet, met with him, is that he did not know where his phone number was on his cell phone or his email, and he had not set up a MyChart account with his doctor. This ended up being a situation where he had hurt himself, that's why he had reached out to me, and he needed to make a telemedicine appointment. That got me asking other seniors that I've met and that I work with, how is this impacting you with the COVID and with being home alone and being living, in many cases, in your homes, not maybe being able to connect with uh, people in, in person like you used to, to learn some of the tech skills that you'd need to have, especially now as we're looking at wintering in our homes again, what are those things you need to know? And uh, many people say, well, I have a flip phone, I have an iPad. Uh, one of the things that's really come clear to me is that there is a need for us to have access to video on a cell phone. Now, this might be something that's like, I'm not doing it. I'm gonna just really encourage you to consider doing this. And the reason for it is, if you are sitting at your desk and on your phone meeting with your family, that's fantastic. It could be a Zoom call or a Duo call. The challenge is many times health situations happen when you're not behind your desk. They're gonna happen when you're at the, you know, at, at the counter in the kitchen or maybe you're in, in the, taking a shower and you slip and fall. It could be maybe you're, you're really sick and you're in bed uh, and you need to call the doctor. It could be that you're out having a great golf game and all of a sudden you pull a muscle. How do you connect and reach for help? How do you connect and uh, have the help that you uh, reach out to your doctor or to your family members as you uh, want to stay in touch? Or maybe this is also you want to take a class. Uh, you want to connect with your friends at the community center. You could do that obviously on your laptop, which is ideal because that's a great place to just sit and enjoy and connect with uh, family and friends. But if you need to be out and about, how do you do that? So some of the things I'm going to show you here today is one, how to use your, uh, your phone. And I'm going to specifically reference an iPhone. I believe later we'll also have a session on Android in case you have an Android. Uh, so how people tell me that I have an iPhone, I don't know if you can see this here, but usually there's an Apple on it. Uh, so that's sometimes that's what people say is, well, what phone do I have? I don't know. But if you see a, a bit, an Apple with a little, little bite out of it, that means you have an Apple phone. Uh, so that's uh, one place to get started. Where's my phone? Where's my email? And where's my settings? This is all going to be done in your iPhone. And to get us started on this, I wanted to share why is this so important that you know where your phone, your email, and your settings are located. If this is something that's new to you, these are items that are on your cell phone. Uh, and in order to find these items and what they're used for, uh, this might be using something that you're familiar with or maybe you've never seen this before. So where is my phone? If you look at the front screen, you're gonna see an icon on there that looks like a handset. It's probably a green square. And if you click on this, you're gonna open up your phone and you'll see some additional items. One will be uh, recent phone calls. Another will be like the handset, like you're dialing a number. Uh, another one will be your voicemail. And this, you might have numbers that are over some of these indicating how many calls have you received? How many voicemails you might have? It's kind of like a number inside of a bubble. So knowing what these are, knowing how to use them will help you answer your phone, will help you make a phone call. You can see who's called you. So you can also track who do you want to talk to, who's trying to reach you. If it's a number you do not know, this is a way that maybe you can 
not answer the phone, but then call them back. So this is one of those uh, helpful tips that I will be sharing on a later session on how can I stay safe on my cell phone. I hope this is good information for you about using the phone icon. Now let's move over to the email icon. So the email icon is one that looks like an envelope. When you click on the envelope, this is going to be where you can send an email and you can receive emails. Something to be shared with on this is as you get your email, you will find Maybe they're from places that you know that are familiar to you. Uh, they could be from people that you know, or they could be from people that you don't know. You could be getting junk mail. When you get into emails, there's a whole nother session on how to manage your email from iPhone. That's going to take a little bit more information, but it's one that having that access on how to stay in touch with maybe a group of people or to take a class or to uh, have an opportunity to uh, follow some of your passions. This is a great way for you to connect and stay in touch with people. The third item we have is called settings. Now settings is this icon that looks like a gear. It's gray and it's usually tucked in with a bunch of other icons. I purposely moved this one out and away from the other icons so we can just concentrate on what are your settings. So from your settings page, this is how you want your phone to look and how you want it to work for you. I, I, it could be that your children have gone in and maybe tried to modify this and make it very simple. In some cases, this really helps. In other cases, this makes it a little bit hard because it could be that maybe the size of the font is, is too hard to read. Or it could be, uh, do you have a do not call? Or are you on Wi-Fi? Some of these terms might be something you're not familiar with. This is just to get you started. Uh, one of the things I wanted to share here though is how to stay safe. Uh, so one of the common issues is, you know, you don't know the caller. So this might be one of the reasons why you haven't considered taking or getting a smartphone. And that's the one with the video capability. But one of the things that can also happen before we start talking about using the video piece is I think many people, have, I've heard from people, they're concerned about using an iPhone or a cell phone because people can call you from anywhere and you don't know who they are. So one of the things, I'm gonna give a few suggestions here, um, and one is where you don't know the caller. There's one that could be a phone number that is from one of the local area codes. Again, you may know that person, you may not know that person, you may take the call, but maybe a little bit of caution. There's a third one, which is an out of state uh, phone number. So it's an area code number that's not local. That one you may want to let go to voicemail and you listen to later. And oftentimes if it is a call that is not appropriate or it is a sales call, they won't leave a message. So you kind of avoided that. Uh, now there's some other calls that you might see come in when you look at it, it says spam risk and what that means is that usually is a, a telemarketer and they're calling to uh, sell you something and i would recommend ignoring that call just letting it go or even you have an option to say ignore call and then the final one is like a political call or uh, you know, it could be from a business that you don't know, and it's possible that there's a caller ID on there. So that's uh, one of the things you could do if you do happen to get a phone call and you do take it, and it is, let's say, one of those local numbers, and it is uh, someone maybe trying to sell you something maybe you're interested in, but you're not quite sure, to determine if it's really a legitimate call, one of the things I'd recommend is you take their phone number and you say, can I call you back or can I text you? This is a great way if they do not give you a number or they give you a made up number or an 800 number, that may be an indication that you do not wanna call them back. But I also wanna show you how to block a call. So on the example where we have a caller 
that's out of an area code that you do not know. If you go and you click, there's a little I dot that's on the side and that'll give you the information on the call. That you'll see at the bottom of the screen, you have to scroll down a little bit, but you have to see at the bottom of the screen, there is a button that says block this call. Uh, take advantage of that and uh, they cannot reach you again. So moving on from the phone, um, how about email? So email again, I have a screenshot here that shows, actually it's a live screenshot. So I have some businesses reaching out to me. I have some personal contacts reaching out to me. I have an Instagram and a Facebook notification that there are some updates. This is gonna be something very similar probably to what you have. Please go ahead and use that as a way of, I can. I wanna read that email or I wanna delete it. Uh, again, that's what email is for. Uh, one of the things you also want to do is if it's what's the email address so if you look if you click on the email you'll see an email address if it ends in a dot com that usually means business dot org or org is for a nonprofit edu is for colleges and universities or it could even be uh, uh, usually it's not the local school district um, and then GOV is for government agencies. There's a lot of custom domain names that are being created now. They may or may not be legitimate. So just be aware if it has something a little bit different, uh, just be cautious. A lot of times for private uh, emails, you're gonna see that it comes from a Gmail or a Yahoo or a Hotmail. Many of you may already have those. Those tend to be um, legitimate. But again, just be aware if it says .au, .biz, .me. Well, .me is, I think, a legitimate one. Uh, but there's, just be aware of what it ends in. And um, so the final piece is the website. So we talked about on website addresses, it kind of goes on the same lines as the email. There's still a, an end to that email address. Again, look for something that looks familiar. And then also you wanna look at the very beginning of that email address. It always starts with HTTP. Now, if it has an S on it, that means it's a secure site. So if you are accessing anything like your doctor's um, account, your banking, anything with banking, uh, anything that was really any secure um, privacy issues, anything that's about your personal information, please make sure that there is an S in that name and you'll see that listed on here, HTTPS and then the colon and then the two slash marks. That indicates that that website is a secure site. Uh, and then there's something I reference here about dual authentication. What that is would require a, a higher level of review. I would recommend looking into your community ed classes for conversation about what is dual authentication and how do I use it uh, but that's something you want to use if there's anything secure like your medical records or your financial records now leading off of this um, this is just off your phone you again looking at the phone when you um, the actual screenshot of your phone you're gonna see you have a lot of icons on there one of the things that's great about phones is you can customize it. You can add extra tools on it. It could be recipes or health tracking devices. And then this is where I, there's a tool called um, for video conferencing. I'm gonna show you a quick video on how to download an app in real time onto your phone so you can have video conferencing. Now, I'll be, just to clarify, this isn't on iPhone. And I will be downloading the tool called Blue Jeans. And Blue Jeans, for clarity, is been provided by uh, Verizon. So it's a pretty solid tool. It is uh, one that is, I find, the be the most suitable probably for seniors. It's very user friendly, and it's a matter of just a few buttons, and you're on a call. The other thing also great about it is it allows you to have more than one person on the call at a time. So just uh, as we go through these steps, I am going to uh, play the video here and I'm gonna walk you through what happens. So when you first get an invite to join our family encounter, you're gonna get a screen that looks a bit like this. And you'll get where you get a request to open the app and you go ahead and just with your finger, click join with the app. And you'll see a screen pops up 
and you'll see it turns a little blue. And as that uh, downloads, you'll see it circles around saying it's connecting and it's asking if you'd like to join with your phone. So go ahead and you're gonna get this screen that comes up. And I don't know if you notice at the top under the blue jeans video conferencing, there was a cloud with the arrow that pointed down. Go ahead and click on that. I already did that, but you couldn't tell with this video. And you'll see that that cloud is now replaced with a little blue square. It's very small, but you'll start seeing that there's a, a circle that goes around that square. And what that circle indicates is that it is actually downloading the app. And it's something that it does take a bit, which is the reason why I wanted to talk you through this. So you get a sense of how long it takes to actually download an app. This might be something new for you. Now, I know some people say an application, an app, it's not an appetizer. Uh, so if this is new to you, one of the things I'd also like to discuss while we're waiting for this to download is you'll need to have your cell phone number and your email. And if those are things that you're not familiar with or have access to, that's something I'll uh, cover on another video, where to find your phone number and where to find your email. Uh, but in the meantime, while we're waiting for this app to load, one of the greatest things about this app is when you make a phone call like this, you're seeing a video with me live with you is you get your, you get to see yourself in a little small video at the bottom and a little box at the bottom. And then anyone else sits on the call. What, so the, I don't know if you've ever done FaceTime, many uh, folks have FaceTime that allow you to have your video on at the same time as your as you can talk to the person live. Okay, you'll see that on the screen, it just said open, and you go ahead, you click that, and a screen will pop up, and then you get this next one going, join meeting. You're gonna to wanna to join with audio and visual. You'll also wanna put in the meeting ID, which you'll get from probably that text message that you received. So you'll see that blue jeans, you click that, and it'll automatically load the meeting number, and then you just have to type in your name, and then once you type in your name, or Duo, or there's several other tools. You click Next, and they're gonna ask you a couple questions, and you say okay to both. And then, you're gonna make sure your microphone's on, your video's on, you join the meeting. And this, I'll be honest, is the hardest thing you do the entire time. And in a second, you would actually join the meeting, and you'd be on live. This is maybe about a three, minute process maybe four minute process and when you're in it it seems really long but as you do this the first time you'll never have to do it again at this point in time there'll be an icon on your phone that's going to look like a uh, a, a blue with that screen on it because that's the blue jeans icon uh, zoom has another one as well and next time you want to make a call you just push that button and you'll be on the call so we will also cover pricing options and uh, what are some of the different features that you might have that'll come in handy for you. So this is something I hope will benefit you. Uh, there's many reasons and uses for a video call. One obviously is to connect with family and friends. Another is to do telemedicine. And this is another reason why having your phone number, your mobile phone number, your email, and this tool could actually be something that saves your life. The reason why we want it on your cell phone is because you can have your phone with you, whether you're in the kitchen or your bedroom, you're gardening, you're out golfing, and that is so important as you are out and about that you have an ability to reach for help at any point in time. And let's say you slip and fall, you don't know if your slip and fall is due to putting on a rug and it just slips out from underneath you, or if you are you know, in the, in the shower and you fell down. Um, those situations can be very dangerous and we wanna know that if it's a broken arm, that's one thing, but if you've been concussed and maybe knocked out for a few hours, that's something completely different. We need to know that and that comes out real clear when you're on video conferencing. Um, and I know sometimes family members don't wanna be worried about you and you don't wanna worry your family members, but this truly will get you the care that you need. Again, the idea is you have the ability to connect in with your doctor. And, and matter of fact, the last week I was seeing my doctor and we were talking about how telemedicine has changed uh, 
people being able to go to the doctor these days. So you can stay home, you can still check in with your doctor. What I didn't realize is telemedicine is actually defined as doing medical, attending medical appointments using telecommunications. That could be via email, it could be via text, uh, or uh, over the phone, but it can also mean doing it with video. The doctor shared with me that, you know, she had reached out to one of her one of her patients who'd been in bed. She didn't, the problem is the patient didn't know how long she had been in bed for. And there was a, you know, there was obviously concerns of depression and anxiety, as well as the physical symptoms that she was experiencing. This is where the doctor was able to see what the situation is, because in many cases, people may, you know, when you're sick, you, you just know you're sick, but having your doctor be able to visually see how you're doing, that helps them provide maybe a better response on what's the next level of treatment. Do you have an emergency contact and do they know what your wishes are? Two things that I've learned. Uh, one is that about a quarter of 26%, in fact, of people facing retirement age today will be aging alone as a single or as a solo senior. Some people found that they are aging alone either by choice or by circumstance. Uh, they may have children and they just live uh, farther away or they're estranged, or maybe they pursued a career and just never had children. So this is going to be changing how aging is going to be needing to be supported. And many of these things are going to require that we have a plan in place and that we have documented what our choices are. So about two months ago, I received a, a text from a former neighbor of mine. And the text basically said, help, I need help using my phone. So I contacted him and learned that he had hurt himself. He had been doing some work outside and uh, he needed to get a hold of the doctor. Well, my initial reaction was, okay, is it an emergency? He's like, oh no, it's not an emergency, not a big deal. But he does need to make an appointment with his doctor. So I got a hold of him and then I realized I needed to actually have this conversation live on uh, using a tool that I call a video conferencing tool that's called Blue Jeans. Uh, uh, so, in the process of doing this, I discovered that downloading an application is not something seniors are familiar with doing and actually causes quite a bit of anxiety. Um, now, many people are not used to having uh, that first time that you're on the screen. If this is something that's new to you, maybe you've used video, but you've never actually activated the video part, I'm going to challenge you to do that. It is phenomenal about what it's like to have people you've always talked to on the phone to now be able to see them. I, I used to work for a large global uh, telecom company, and for years we had phone calls, conference calls, but we never ever saw each other. So I actually never met them, but I worked with them for years and years. It's absolutely fascinating how you get to know somebody just by their voice, or maybe you just get to know them by texting or emailing. So much can be, well, not as good as being in person. So much can still be communicated when you are face to face. This is really important, especially if you are going into a doctor's appointment and you have the chance of having your family members with you virtually while you're in the doctor's appointment. Sometimes when you're in that appointment, that's why I think we used to have family members go to our doctor's appointments with us so they could be a second set of eyes and ears and could ask questions of the professionals. Now we're in a situation where we don't have that. Uh, when we send our loved ones into the clinic, we have to sit outside and wait for them to come out. And when you say, okay, how'd it go? Well, maybe they don't remember what was said. Maybe they were overwhelmed. Um, maybe they don't want to tell you what happened. But imagine if you could bring your own phone in and you could connect in with your family and friends because you have this video app actually on your phone. Uh, this could really transform how we stay in touch with each other 
Uh, it could also be a way that you stay in touch with your friends. Maybe you're able to do a book club. Or uh, there's a friend of mine, he gets together with his daughter and he and his wife have dinner and his daughter also gets the ingredients and she makes dinner as well. So they're able to kind of have Sunday a Sunday meal together where they're both cooking at the same time, they're visiting, it's live, uh, and they're able to create some new memories um, even though they physically cannot be in the same place. So I'd love to hear some thoughts that you have about this. Um, if I'd also love for you to share this information with your family members, with your neighbors, with uh, your friends, people at church, people in your senior community center. This is truly a situation where this could be an opportunity to save a life. Anything our family encounter can do for you, please reach out to our website at www.ourfamilyencounter.com or you can call our number at 952-679-8332 and we will be happy to work with you on how to either create an aging plan or we can connect you with social workers in order to how to implement your aging plan so you are not having to go through the aging process alone. You can have as many as 10, 15 people on that call if you needed to. Not that I'd recommend that with your doctor, but if you have your family members there or you go into the hospital and you want to uh, maybe attend a family member's birthday and you have all these people from your family around the country, you, that's the neat thing is you can all come together and have like a little family reunion whenever you want. Uh, you can have, I, I've had one friend of mine uh, who has uh, happy hours and uh, they get together like every Thursday evening and three o'clock in the afternoon they have a happy hour together. So it's not just medical, it's also so you stay in touch with friends. People are using this to take classes. Uh, there's so many opportunities with using the video and to stay connected to the community. So uh, thank you so much for letting me share this and if you have any questions uh, please reach out and we'll be happy to work with you.